Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Salem Lutheran Church. Those who are with us here live this morning and those who are with us on live stream, welcome. It's good to have you all with us today. Uh, I have a few announcements to make. Uh, many of these announcements have to do with the, because of the coronavirus. You know, we can't do everything like we like to do and what we used to do. So, for instance, next Sunday is Palm Sunday, also known as the Sunday of the Passion. And it's traditional to have palm branches in the church and palm procession and all those things that go with it. Well, obviously, we can't do that. And we can't do that, of course, if, on uh, live stream. I don't think you can uh, virtually be with us. So we're going to do the next best thing. For those who are with us here today, as you leave, there are palm branches available to take with you as you go. Right, Tim? They're right at the back door, so grab one or two as you leave this morning. Uh, for those who are not with us but are watching a live stream and want to participate, uh, we'll be having that box outside the front door of the church. Stop by this week and pick up a palm branch or two. And then when you get home, take a picture of you and your family with your palm branches and send it to Tim. And uh, the way to send it to Tim is to send it to Tim. Barrage, T I M B A R R A G E, at slcw.org. So if you send those, we're going to create a virtual palm procession. So where the palm procession should occur in the church on a, on a normal Sunday, uh, we'll have it on the screen with all those pictures you send us. So send an email to Tim with an attachment of that picture. Please, the more we get, the more fun we can have with the palm procession next Sunday. Also, we're going to do the same thing with Easter. You know, it's always been traditional that we have an Easter egg hunt. Well, with the coronavirus, that's kind of difficult. So what we're going to do is the next best thing. Uh, this year, we're going to have our second annual virtual Easter egg hunt. This egg hunt requires that you create your beautiful egg creations, hide them, and then take photos of those eggs. They do not have to be visible to be counted. And again, Send those photos to Tim Barrage, T-I-M-B-A-R-R-A-G-E, at slcw.org, and include the number of eggs you have hidden in the photos. An Easter basket of useful items will be the prize for guessing the number of eggs shown as hidden. The winner will be announced on Easter morning. So I hope that you'll all participate with this and help us make this season as difficult as it still is uh, to be as joyous and as uplifting as possible. Uh, also, I don't forget we are going to have Good Friday services here. It once again will be the service of Tenebrae, which is a service of darkness. Lights and candles go out as we continue throughout the service. So we'd like encourage you to come and join us here live or on live stream. That'll be a week from Friday. I'm not sure of the date. What date is that, Tim? Do you know offhand? No, he doesn't know. Okay, I thought Tim knew everything. Uh, but it'll be a week, a week from this coming Friday uh, at 7 o'clock in the evening here at Salem. And hopefully we'll get past all this, so I would encourage you all to continue getting your vaccine shots. I'm sure most of you have had both of your shots by now. Is that true? Who has had all their both shots? Raise your hand. Okay. Well, if you haven't, I know a number of people are worried. I've heard about the side effects. All I can tell you is in my case, I had my second shot, and the only side effect I had was that when I touched where they gave me the injection, it felt a little tender. That was it. So I'd encourage you all to get your shots, and hopefully we can get past this, and we can be back to worshiping here at Salem and filling this church with joyous singing and rejoicing in the love and the care of God. So with that, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. So let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living waters, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. 
Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and the power of God. Your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. We continue with our gathering hymn, which is Just As I Am Without One Plea. For those who are at home and have a red hymnal, if you'd like to follow along, it's 592. <laughs> And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, 
Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel for those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. This second reading is from Hebrews chapter 5, 5 through 10. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, the word of the Lord, thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. Return to the Lord your God. The 
The Holy Gospel according to John, the 11th chapter. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. But Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day that you have filled with your power and presence. We ask now that you open our hearts and minds to your word that we may hear and learn. As in his name we pray. Amen. Before I start my thoughts, I have to compliment Amanda. Anybody who takes on the word Melchizedek has got to be, uh, you did a pretty good job of it. You have to be half Jewish to know how to say Melchizedek, so I was, it was easier for me. But I always enjoy those kind of things with the readers. I, I remember one time, I got to tell you one story. I, when I was still at St. Paul's in Belleville, Lutheran Church, there. And uh, I had this one lady, Sadie Arnes was her name, and she was one of my lectors. And uh, she came up to me one Sunday on Easter morning and said to me, Pastor, how do you pronounce this word? And the word was uh, sepulcher. And uh, I said, it's sepulcher, uh, Sadie. And she said, I said, and as she walked away, I said, but whatever you do, don't say sepulcher. Well, you, you almost know what's going to happen, don't you? And I was sitting there just like I would be here, and she was over at the lectern reading, and she got to that word, and she paused, and I thought to myself, oh, no. And she said, sepulcher. And then she looked at me and gave me the dirtiest look I've ever gotten in church. <laughs> so anyways, you did a wonderful job on that, by the way. The text for my thoughts, though, today is from Romans chapter 15 as we continue our, our theme. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. And then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. I'd like to begin by sharing a story with you. I, I read this story uh, in, in a, I think it was a magazine some time ago. And I copied it down, and I want to just share it with you. So I'm, bear with me, I'm going to have to read it to you. There is an old story about a farmer whose mule fell into a dry well. The farmer heard the mule making noise and discovered the poor animal's misfortune. Now, after assessing the situation, the farmer decided that the mule wasn't worth the time and the expense that it would take to save it. Essentially, he lost hope in that old mule. So he called his neighbors together and asked them to help him haul dirt to bury the animal and to put it out of its misery. Now, when the first shovelfuls of dirt came down, the mule became hysterical and began to kick. But as the dirt continued to hit his back, it dawned on the creature that he should shake it off each time and step up on the growing mound of dirt beneath him. Load after load of dirt hit him square in the back. But no matter how painful it was, he shook the dirt off and stepped on top of it. Before long, the accumulation of dirt was such that the old mule, battered and exhausted, stepped triumphantly over the wall of the well. The dirt had been meant to bury him, but it actually saved his life because of the manner in which he had responded to the situation. When we possess the hope and belief that ultimately we're going to be successful in our journeys, 
There's not much of what comes our way on a daily basis that we can't handle. When we see negative events as stepping stones and have hope that our problems can actually propel us towards our goals rather than hinder us, then we are, of all people, truly blessed. If I could pass along one virtue to all of our players, this is Jim Tressel talking, by the way, and to every reader of this version of the Winner's Manual, it would be the virtue of hope. What is hope? I, I, I'll never forget a, a sermon that I heard a long time ago. In that sermon, the pastor said, Hope is like being an Olympic runner. And as you stand the starting line, as you are ready to get in position for the start of the race, one of the judges runs over to you and hands you the Olympic gold medal. Before the race begins, you know that you have already won. That is hope. And that's the hope that we Christians have. You know, last week I, I spoke in my series about how we worry about everything in life. We worry about how life will turn out for us. The wonderful thing about being a Christian is that we already know how life will turn out. We already know that things will be just fine. The promise of the cross tells us that. The promise of the cross tells us that this life is going to turn out just fine fine. The promise of the cross tells us that we have already won the race. You know, in our Bible study, we we're talking about 1 John, and that's the message of John. John says, you know, you can afford to love and give of yourself to everyone around you. Why? Because Jesus Christ loves you and has already promised you the gift of eternal life. You already know that when this life comes to its natural end, what your fate will be. You will be welcomed into the glories of heaven. And so therefore, you can live your life as a Christian with abandon because tomorrow is already taken care of. Or I always remember St. Paul near the end of his life, or at least so he thought when he wrote these words. And he wrote to his good friend Timothy to say goodbye. Uh, and he says this in 2 Timothy. Here's Paul, he's in prison. He fears he's, he's, his life is over. He's going to be found guilty. He's going to be executed. It's, it's all done. And so he writes to Timothy, who was almost like a son to him. And at the time of the writing of this letter was now the bishop of Ephesus. And he writes to Timothy and says, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have come, I have kept the faith. Now listen to this. Here, here's the part in Timothy's letter by Paul where the hope comes in. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. You know, here's Paul saying, I'm near the end, you know, I, I, the race isn't over yet, but I've already won. I've already got my gold medal because that's the promise of God. St. Paul had this hope, the hope that he had already run the race and the fact that he had already won the race, the hope that the crown of everlasting life was already his, not something he had to earn, not something that might happen, not something that was still out there for him to achieve, not something that he might get, no, something that was already his. And because St. Paul knew that he had already won the race, that meant that he could run his race of life with wild abandon. It was already a done deal for him. Heaven was his home. So what was there to fear? What was there to fear? What could possibly go wrong for him? And it was that hope that drove St. Paul. What drives you? I think that far too many times in our life, it is fear that drives us. Fear of what lies behind us. And so we better run fast before it catches up with us. We had better keep running and running and running as fast as we can, faster and faster and faster, always looking back behind ourselves to make sure that we are staying ahead of all the things that frighten us. 
always afraid to slow down for just a moment, to take a breath, to rest, for fear that those things will overtake us. And yet sometimes afraid to go forward. Who knows what's just around the corner? Who knows what evil lurks out there in the shadows? And so we get frozen, afraid to stay where we are, afraid of those things that might catch up with us, but afraid to go forward because of what might just be around the corner ahead for us. Doesn't that just make you tired some days? I mean, I think that's where depression comes. We just get tired of being scared. Scared of the past, scared of the future. I mean, really tired and scared. And during this pandemic, hasn't that been our overwhelming fear that's led to depression? Fear of what's trying to run behind us and catch up with us, but afraid of what's ahead of us. Always afraid. Always looking back over our shoulders, seeing what might be catching up, and yet afraid to go forward because of what might still be lying ahead for us. I talked to a friend who had just gotten his second vaccine. And I said, well, you must feel better now that you got your second shot, right? He said, no, he said, there's still a danger. He's still living in fear, still living in fear. And I know you gotta be careful, but you can't live every day fearful. It'll just drive you insane. And if you keep your eyes looking ahead that you might miss the danger sneaking up from behind, that'll make you tired. And yet I know so many people, as I'm sure you do, who do just that. And that's where hope comes in. Hope that all of those things that we say here in this place are real. Hope that when we talk about Jesus Christ, it's real. Do we really believe that? I always ask this. Every church I've ever met in some sermon during the time, I've always said, do you really believe this stuff that we talk about on Sunday morning? This stuff about Jesus dying on the cross and rising from the dead and that heaven is real and, and that we have the promise of eternal life. Do you believe all that stuff? Or that just words you say on a Sunday morning? Do you really believe that? Because if you really believe that, then it has an impact on how you live your life every day. That's what Paul is saying. If you have that faith, if you have that hope, then it guides the way in which you live out each day of life. Hope that all those things we say in this place is real is what binds us together. So I'm going to throw a few quotes out to you from the Bible which remind us of that. Cast all your cares upon me because I really care for you. Nothing ever separates us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Or hope is what remembers these words from Jeremiah. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for good, not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. Plans for good. Plans for good. Not disaster. To give you a future and a hope. Or as I've always said, and like I said last week, focus on the things over which you have control and then give everything else up to God. And then have hope that God will lift you up on eagle's wings so that you can touch the face of God. Amen. We continue our service with the singing of our hymn of the day, which as soon as Tim moves it on the screen, I'll be able to tell you, it's Christ the life of all the living. Those at home on live stream, if you have a red hymnal, is 339.
Christmas, Jesus, unto you. You have suffered great affliction and have borne it patiently, even death by crucifixion fully to atone for me. For you chose to be tormented that my doom should be prevented. Thousand, thousand thanks are due, dearest Jesus, unto you. Then for all that bought me pardon for the sorrows deep and sore, for the anguish in the garden, I will thank you evermore. And now living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostolic Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, for the world, and for all those who are in need. Hear us, O God. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. You wash us through and through and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world. Give your people courage to forgive. Through them show the world new possibilities. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation. You fill the earth from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder. With your presence and you call us to attend your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds. Protect all from violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. You promise to write your law in our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace, and give them creativity to works for the welfare of all. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, 
send us grace. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence, those who are lonely or feel unforgivable, those who need healing of mind or body, those who are living and those who are dying. Oh Lord, we especially have our heart go out to those who died in the recent tragedies that we saw in the news this week, of all those Asian women killed. We pray for them and pray for their families who mourn their loss. We pray for this nation that it may heal. And we pray even for the gunman that he may find forgiveness. Oh Lord, we continue to pray for all those who struggle with the coronavirus, those who are hospitalized today, those who are ill at home, those who have died. We remember them and we remember their families who grieve at their loss. Lord, we continue to pray for our first line defenders, those doctors, nurses, EMTs, techs, those first line responders who stand between us and the abyss. Oh Lord, keep them safe and keep them strong. Even as we look forward to the day when we can see this coronavirus in the rearview mirror and celebrate your healing and power. Oh Lord, we also pray for Barbara and Monica, for Lynn and Bob, and Triton, and Ron, for Calvin and Levon, for Patty and Donita, for Patrick and Marion, for Sue, Leo, and Jean, for Tony and George and Sherman, and for the Sanders family. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and death, empower this congregation in discipleship, equip children and teachers in Sunday school, confirmation and learning ministries. Give us your truth and wisdom and teach us to follow Jesus. In the cross of Christ, your name is glorified. We praise you for those who have given us words to worship you. With all those who have died in Christ, bring us into life everlasting. Hear us, O God. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. for joining us this Sunday for our Sunday live stream service. This is the time that we would be passing the offering plate. I encourage you to make a contribution to Salem Lutheran Church either by check or by using our PayPal button that is found on our slcw.org website. Thank you in advance and I now return you to our service. Be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and the dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we offer now. Grace our table with your presence and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. 
Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, Open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <coughs> one, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. So let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So with this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection, and we look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the gifts of God for the people of God. Take and eat, for this is the body of Christ. Take and drink, for this is the blood of Christ. And now may this body and this blood strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now receive the blessings of our Lord. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. We conclude our service this morning with Ah, Holy Jesus. For those at home and with a red hymnal, it's 349.
Well, before I let you go, just two quick things. Number one, Tim would be mad at me because I failed to mention his Bible study on Wednesday more after Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock. This is our last one, I believe, isn't it, Tim? Last one is this Wednesday. So I've been having fun just sitting back and not being responsible and enjoying the, the class. So I hope that you'll join us uh, 7 o'clock this Wednesday for our last Lenten Bible study. And, of course, I still have my Bible study on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, uh, which you can do on uh, Zoom. Join us on Zoom or view it later on that day. Also, I have to point out, we have a visitor with us today. He was an old-time member, was the janitor, I understand, at one time when Terry Parker was the pastor. And he mentioned a couple of people. He says, I still know a few. He says, like Don Palmquist and uh, the Rock. Now my, my mind just went blank. That's it. <laughs> you got your name right. Uh, so I hope... Even though we have to maintain social distancing and all that, I hope you'll wave at him as you leave church this morning and invite him to come back and join us again. We enjoyed having you with us this morning. Until then, go in peace, share the good news.